Stars have a finite lifespan much like all other living things. The biggest stars also end their lives by exploding as supernovae. Supernovae, which shine for weeks or months and produce more light than an entire galaxy in a few rare instances, are among the most intense cataclysms in the universe. There are other kinds of supernova explosions, but the most frequent one happens during the death of a massive star, one with a mass of between 8 and 140 times that of the Sun. Astronomers have now captured photographs of a large red supergiant star's final seconds before it exploded supernova for the first time. In the course of their study projects known as Young Supernova Experiments, scientists observed the violent end of the fading star and dubbed their findings a breakthrough. What is the name of this supernova and why are scientists worried about it? Could life on Earth be in danger from a close supernova? Let's find out. Consider yourself an astronomer in the first half of the 17th century. You can only scan the night sky with your unaided eye because the telescope hasn't yet been created. Then one day, you witness an amazing sight. In the next few weeks, a brilliant new star emerges that is brighter than Venus itself. Even in broad daylight, one can see it since it is so bright. It hangs about in the sky for several months before gradually fading. Sky watchers in other parts of Europe, the Middle East and Asia also observed what the German scientist Johann Kepler observed in 1604 as well. Since then, we have learned that it was actually a supernova explosion. A huge explosion that occurs when some stars reach the end of their lifetimes. The last time a supernova appeared within our Milky Way galaxy was in 1604, or at the very least, the last one known to have been seen. It's possible that there have been other nearby supernovas since then, although they were probably hidden by atmospheric gas and dust. The Crab Nebula, whose light first reached Earth in 1054, is one of the remnants of supernovas that occurred in the past. The supernova discovered in 1987 in the Milky Way's small neighborhood galaxy, the Large Magellanic Cloud, was the best thing to Kepler's supernova in recent years and designated 1987A. Other galaxies have also had a large number of supernova explosions which are visible via telescopes but would have gone completely unnoticed by observers in Kepler's time. To put it another way, it has been 418 years since we last witnessed a star explosion in our galaxy. Are bright, close supernovae therefore due? That's one of my favorite topics over a beer, says Brian Fields, an astronomer at the University of Illinois in Urbana-Champaign. According to astronomers, our galaxy should see between one and three star explosions on average every century. Therefore, a four-century difference is a little larger than one might anticipate. Informally, we all agree that we are past due, despite the fact that you cannot say we are statistically overdue, according to Fields. The astronomers of today are considerably more ready for the next supernova than Kepler or anyone else would have been a few decades ago. The telescopes used by modern scientists can record visible light. These tools would demonstrate what a supernova would appear like if we were able to fly nearby and observe it directly. However, we also have telescopes that can capture infrared light, which has hues that are outside of the visible spectrum and beyond the red end. Since infrared light has longer wavelengths than visible light, it can penetrate gas and dust more easily than visible light revealing objects that may be beyond the capabilities of conventional telescopes. For instance, the James Webb Space Telescope mostly captures infrared light. The electromagnetic spectrum includes both visible and infrared light, but supernovas also emit neutrinos, which are subatomic particles. Detectors are now available to capture these neutrinos as well. Additionally, scientists now have detectors that can capture gravitational waves, which are thought to be released by exploding stars, but are actually minor vibrations in the fabric of space-time. Meanwhile, astronomers captured the dramatic end of a red supergiant star's life while it was happening using telescopes 
in Hawaii, operated by the University of Hawaii. Before it burst into a Type II supernova, the enormous star's rapid self-destruction and ultimate death throes were recorded. Wynn Jakobsen Galan, a graduate research fellow at the University of California, Berkeley, and member of the National Science Foundation said, this is a breakthrough in our understanding of what massive stars do moments before they die. Direct detection of pre-supernova activity in a red supergiant star has never been observed before in an ordinary Type II supernova. For the first time, we watched a red supergiant star explode. They said that some of it was just good timing for catching the star's end. This is significant because it is the first time a spectrum or a rainbow array of starlight divided into its component colors has been recorded directly from a supernova. In the summer of 2020, the Pan-STARRS telescope first collected data on this star. The star went boom the next September. Fortunately, the scientists were able to acquire the spectrum of the explosion, which is now known as Supernova 2020 TLF or SN 2020 TLF. According to Ken Chambers, an astronomer with the IFA and Pan-STARRS main investigator, this is an example of how repeatedly surveying the sky with Pan-STARRS brings new discoveries. Without the constant monitoring of the night sky with Pan-STARRS, this kind of discovery would not have been possible. The cosmic spectacle was compared by researchers to viewing a ticking time bomb. Until now, we haven't found evidence of such dramatic activity in a dying red supergiant star where we watch it emit such bright light before collapsing and combusting. After the explosion, the team continued to observe SN 2020 TLF. Based on information from Keck Observatory's Deep Imaging and Multi-Object Spectrograph DEMOS, and the Near Infrared Echelet Spectrograph NIRES, they found that SN 2020 TLF's progenitor red supergiant star was 10 times more massive than the Sun and was situated in the NGC 5731 galaxy, 120 million light years away from Earth. The findings suggested that the star is surrounded by dense circumstellar material. It is believed that this is the same gaseous substance that Pan stars had captured, violently ejecting a few months previously. The incident offers several surprises as well as important new information on how supernovae form. Prior to their explosion, red supergiants were supposed to be rather quiet, according to previous theories. However, the star was not as quiet in the instance of SN 2020 TLF. In the final years before the supernova, bright, powerful radiation was seen emanating from the star. This is proof that at least several stars like it have undergone severe interior alterations. The huge gaseous material ejection then takes place right prior to the explosion and collapse. As you've certainly heard, when looking for life elsewhere, the adage, follow the river, is frequently utilized. Now the adage might be more like follow the bright radiation when identifying red supergiants on the verge of exploding. Such radiation might be the sign of an approaching supernova if the findings from these investigations can be generalized to other red supergiants. Overall, SN 2020 TLF's discoveries will offer important hints regarding how massive stars behave in their dying moments. Finding more SN 2020 TLF-like events will have a significant impact on how we define the last few months of stellar development and will bring together theorists and observers in the effort to unravel the enigma of how huge stars spend their dying moments. Supernovas come in two different varieties, according to scientists. A white dwarf star sucks material from a partner star in a Type I supernova until a runaway nuclear reaction occurs, shattering the white dwarf and sending debris hurtling into space. A Type I was Kepler's. A star that has run out of nuclear fuel collapses under the force of gravity in a Type II supernova also known as a core collapse supernova. The collapse then bounces, causing an explosion. 
Depending on its nature, a supernova may light so brightly that it briefly eclipses the entire galaxy. However, Type II supernovas are particularly intriguing because in addition to light, they also emit a significant amount of neutrinos. In fact, the neutrino emission may begin a little before the explosion itself. We may be able to witness some of these early pre-supernova neutrinos before the core collapse actually occurs, if the star is close enough. Neutrino detectors would probably catch the signal hours or even days before the explosion itself became apparent if the red giant star Betelgeuse went supernova. Betelgeuse's brightness has fluctuated recently and some astronomers believed it was about to explode. More recent research, however, indicates that the dimming was likely brought on by dust clouds or sunspot activity on the star's surface. However, it is anticipated that the massive star would explode within the next 100,000 years. Suppose neutrinos from a galactic supernova reach the Earth. In that case, astronomers will receive an automatic alert sent out by an array of neutrino detectors known as Supernova Early Warning System, or SNUES. Astronomers are currently developing SNUES 2.0, which will perform the same role as its predecessor, but with greater triangulation capability, after scientists created the original version of SNUES in the early 2000s. To help optical devices focus their attention, the network will employ data from seven distinct detectors spread over six different nations and Antarctica to pinpoint the supernova's general direction in the sky. Neutrino science was still in its infancy when 1987A exploded, but three active detectors nevertheless managed to recall 20 neutrinos. Thousands, or maybe hundreds of thousands of neutrinos will be captured by the global network of detectors if the supernova occurs right now within our galaxy. If a collapsing star is heavy enough, it may form a black hole, in which case the entire explosion fizzles out. This is one instance that could produce an especially provocative signal. The neutrino stream would abruptly cease in that case. That would be incredibly interesting because you could actually see the sharp cutoff that would signify the formation of a black hole. The missing star may potentially be found by astronomers searching through lists of known stars. If you notice a blank or a missing star, it might be the location of a brand new black hole. Could life on Earth be in danger from a close supernova? In theory, yes, but such an explosion would need to occur extremely close by and at present, none of the nearest stars are in danger of doing so. This is fortunate because a close supernova's radiation blast would be disastrous. The supernova would release gamma, X and ultraviolet rays over a few weeks. These rays wouldn't necessarily reach Earth, but they would destroy the ozone layer's protective layer nonetheless. Therefore, it wouldn't transform us into the Hulk, but remove the stratosphere's ozone layer. Without the ozone layer, the planet would be inundated with the sun's lethal UV radiation, which may destroy oceanic phytoplankton and have a cascading impact on the food chain, possibly causing a mass extinction. It's possible that such a thing has happened at such point in the history of our planet. According to Fields and his co-workers, a major extinction that occurred at the close of the Devonian period, some 360 million years ago, might have been brought on by a supernova. Plants were the early pioneers of early dry land life throughout the Devonian period. The age of fishes was so-called because marine life had already become extremely diversified. The researchers of this study discovered plant spores that were burned by ultraviolet radiation in the soil during the transition between the Devonian and the Carboniferous periods, indicating that these spores existed at the time the ozone layer was being depleted. Even though there are several disasters that can damage the ozone layer on Earth, the experts argue that a supernova is the most likely culprit in this scenario. According to a statement from Brian Fields, 
Earth-based catastrophes like large-scale volcanism and global warming can destroy the ozone layer too, but there just isn't enough evidence to support these hypotheses. Instead, we propose that one or more supernova explosions about 65 light-years away from Earth could have been responsible for the protracted loss of ozone. It is possible that a supernova will do enough damage to endanger life on Earth. The aftermath of such an explosion would flood Earth with dangerous UV radiation, but the devastation wouldn't stop there. Supernova debris would continue to fall on Earth for up to 100,000 years, producing radioactive isotopes in the atmosphere. Fossil data suggests that biodiversity declined for a total of 300,000 years prior to the final Devonian mass extinction, which further complicates issues. This raises the possibility that more than one supernova may have ploughed Earth. Jesse Miller, a co-author of the study, remarked, This is entirely possible. Massive stars usually occur in clusters with other massive stars, and other supernovae are likely to occur soon after the first explosion. The team has already specified what they need to look for, even though they still need definitive data to support their theory. The radioactive isotopes produced by the interaction of supernova debris with Earth's atmosphere would have long since decayed. Therefore, it would be clear that at least one nearby starburst around the Devonian Carboniferous boundary if scientists discover evidence of these isotopes in rocks from that period. Are extinctions due to supernovae in the future a concern? In terms of supernovae, Earth generally has little cause for fear. The Milky Way is a vast region, measuring almost 100,000 light years across. And while experts predict that our galaxy experiences a supernova once every 50 years, the most recent one was in 1604. Currently, Betelgeuse, Eta Carinae and Spica are the most likely contenders to become the next supernova in the Milky Way. Betelgeuse is 650 light years from Earth, so its explosion won't affect us, but it will make for a beautiful sight because it will be visible throughout the day and will be as brilliant as the full moon. Nearly 7,500 light years away, Eta Carinae also presents no danger. At 260 light years away, Spica is the nearest known supernova candidate, although it won't likely go supernova for another few million years. Additionally, Spica is still located a good 25 light years away from the so called supernova kill distance, so we're safe for now. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.